Hello and welcome to Chugging Along. I'm Tim. And I'm Sam. So we've been away for a few weeks because Sam is recovering from an operation, but luckily she's on the mend. But we are back on our Holston Junction to London series where we are on the home stretch. We chug on one of the most beautiful sections of the canal, share a lock with a huge 70 foot traditional narrowboat and finish in the town of Tring. But how does it rank in the list of our favourite canal towns? You have to stick around till the end of this video to find out. But before we get into the cruise, I'd like to say thank you to everyone that met my family and I over the weekend at the Crick Boat Show. Sam wasn't there, unfortunately, but she did enjoy seeing all the photographs and getting all the feedback and stuff. And we will be sharing a vlog from our experience there next week. Right, so let's get into today's cruise, where we start in the village of Stoke Hammond. We think it's a great place and there's a pub that's currently for sale. Would be really fun to have a go cruising on one of these lifeboats. It wasn't long till we made it to the Three Locks pub. We topped up our water tank and had, like the name of the pub suggests, three locks to chug up. It's always nice getting a helping hand from volunteers. Thanks, guys. Time for the obligatory heron shot, and as a bonus, here's my lemon drizzle cake.
This is a really peaceful section of canal with rolling hills. The Grand Union really surprised us with its beauty. We haven't seen this many sheep near a canal since we were in Wales. If there's a canal side pub and the weather is sunny, you just know there's going to be a few moored boats nearby. At this point of the day, we still have been in all these double locks on our own. This is a really interesting looking converted industry barge. It doesn't look like there are any windows on it. Here's the popular narrowboat rental company, Wyvern Shipping. This is Leighton Buzzard Town Centre. The CRT put in a special shopping mooring area next to the Tesco. We're not historians, but we're quite sure this isn't an original feature of the canal. Now this is incredible boat paintwork. And sorry Chuggles, but we do quite like that rabbit tiller pin. Not that we'd ever swap you. Look at the big paddle wheel on the back of that boat. Certainly more interesting than a standard propeller. Our friends Jam Cam and Cam said they were thinking about buying that exact vessel before they got Badger. We have seen it going before, just on a video. It is a beauty. This boat has a proper front door on it. A letterbox wouldn't be of much use though. We saw this Watford Football Club branded boat in Warwick. Now, here it is, much closer to its habitat. We'll be chugging through Watford soon. The 
countryside really opened up here. And I fell in. You may have seen this footage already from our 10k subscriber special. I misjudged okay? the gap and my what trusted happened? Crocs let me down. <laughs> I don't think Crocs are a good idea on boats. Oh no. Well, that means we've all fallen in. <laughs> We chugged up the next lock and found this beautiful spot where we got this hot air balloon view out of the window. We were more between the two Ivanhoe locks. We were getting prepared to start with Lock Vegas, where it's non-stop lockage down to Rickmansworth. This section will definitely slow down our average speed. Now this might have been the best canal view we'd seen in England so far. What a great farmer's field mooring these boats have. We had a leisurely cruise with this spider and saw a native British flamingo. Chugged around the CRT doing their duties and did lock after lock, still without a lock buddy. until we found a lock buddy that made Mary L look really short by comparison. This must have been 70 foot long, a no traditional way. boat with a passionate owner. Tim mentioned that the fumes of the traditional engine did seem to go directly into his lungs though. Yeah, all good. That's definitely a downside to having the exhaust on the roof. Here's something for Henry and Dad, a Pullman Railway Coach branded narrowboat. Very posh and tasteful. Chug past the Aylesbury Arm, which is navigable all the way to the town. This was our final set of locks of the day next to these reservoirs. I didn't actually get a great view of them on the day because I had sun cream in my eye. That's the Wendover arm, which isn't fully navigable. A small section of it is though, and it seems like this section is close to Tringtown Centre. But 
we decided to moor on the Grand Union Main Line near Tring Railway Station. Tring is one of those places that is considered close to London and it felt like a real milestone on our journey. We moored up on metal rings across from an industrial park. With another great journey in the can, it's now time for our Tring Diaries. So that's the end of today's cruise and we really enjoyed Tring. We would say that it's our second favourite canal town after Nantwich. Yeah, and then, so we've got Nantwich, Tring and then Banbury at number three, I would say. Yep, I agree. Yeah. But now Tim, it's over to you for those all-important cruising statistics. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Sam. So let's have a look, shall we? So this was over two days. We did 14 miles and 22 locks, and that was all in 14 hours. So some easy mathematics. Our average speed was one mile an hour. That now means our trip average has gone down a little bit to 1.54 miles an hour. We're trying to get to London on a 1.5 average and lock Vegas is upon us that average will drop below 1.5 I imagine uh, that now means we've done 173 out of the 205 miles to London to join us next week as we show you what Tim and his family got up to at the Creek Boat Show that's right yeah so thank you very much for watching this video all the way to the end and remember no matter what you do in life you've got to keep chugging